Right, well, today we are going to be designing characters. And there are a number of ways to approach character design. Um, often this will be, as an illustrator, you will be given a passage in a book or characters from a book, um, and then you have to decide how they're going to look. So what I thought mm -hmm. I would do is give you a couple of almost descriptive cues okay. for you to interpret. I'm getting a brief, am I? Yeah. So, um, and, and I'll draw along with you so we can see how, in a yeah. sense, the choices we make are slightly different. So um, this character is going to, it's an adventurous character on a quest and it, the character is going to wear uh, clothing to keep out the cold. Okay. Um, is going to have a distinctive hat of some sort, <laughs> possibly with a feather in it. Okay. Uh, it can be um, the gender you want it to be. Okay. Um, and I want you to sort of give the character one surprising element. <laughs> it can be what it's wearing or who it is. Or, you know, you, you tell me, you know, in a sense, as you go, you can sort of make that decision. You don't have to do it straight away. So let's start off with, um, I suppose, creating the, 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 uh, the character, the look of the character, so we can make a decision. Where do you usually start? Just on well, the, I, uh... I sort of start almost indistinctly with that. That already, can you see, I've just made the, you know, this, yeah. that immediately as I did that has made me think, this character is not going to be human. Oh, okay. There's something like that. That's it's not going to be human, and I think possibly it's going to be big and cumbersome. So that and already there's an ear going in, so it's going <sighs> to be a bear. So my character is going to be a bear. Oh. <laughs> now you've made a few marks. What is that suggesting to you? Um, well, I was trying to. I was going to start off with the hat. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. And, and, and in and a way, he's... these these characters can sort of interact with each other. And I think part of this idea of designing characters is that um, in the way that we're doing it, we, we've decided they, they are, you know, questing characters, in a sense. So they, mm. they, there's an adventure sort of quality to them rather than sort of cosy domestic characters. Mm. So we, we know that there's going to be some sort of adventuring quality to them. Um, I'm clothing my bear, I think, or, mm. already. So, so it's going to be... A, uh, a sort of anth anthropomorphic entity of some sort. Um, that's interesting. You've that, that that's the hat. So that's got a sort of, <laughs> that's got a sort of trapper quality, hasn't it? Which which goes with the bear in a sense. Oh no! Um, <laughs> I, I think um, I think also the idea of maybe designing characters as well is that you are again setting up visual story cues um, all the time. You know, to, to, to make you think, oh, oh. Look at that. <laughs> that's my pencil gone. <laughs> I'm going to go for another pencil. Oh, and I'm going to have to sharpen it. Um, has it got the scarf on it? Oh, Dad. Not prepared at all. It's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> to sharpen my pencil while you carry on creating your character. Um, okay. And the idea of, yes, I'm creating a sort of story cues through the character, I think, is. is um, is one part of this type of character design where you are not starting off with a preconceived notion apart from maybe the role you want these characters to play in a in a story or a, a, a comic strip or or even a single illustration um, but I think by designing characters you are deciding already that they're going to take part in a in a narrative and I think well that's going to be part two of what we're we're doing um, so uh, and you said they have to be dressed warmly. Dressed warmly. I, I actually rather circumvented that by uh, <laughs> making my character a bear. Oh, so yeah. he is by nature sort of, you know, clothed in fur. But I'm also going to, I think, give him a sort of overcoat because I think overcoats are, are nice to draw, they can be very expressive. Think about overcoats, you can also give them plenty of pockets. And designing character as well is 
part of it is also being able to, as you go, provide detail. And it doesn't matter what that detail is necessarily, as long as there's plenty of it. That's the nature of detail that, um, you know, try not to be generic in any of your decisions. If What do you mean by generic? Well, I mean, don't, if he's going to wear a coat, don't make it a sort of coat with no ideas. <laughs> don't make it a sort of, you know, an ordinary coat necessarily. Um, you know, make it distinctive in some way. Give it belts and buckles and pouches. So my bear obviously has plenty of Right. Capacity, I'm carrying not capacity. Do a coat, but I don't. <laughs> well, no, but then you can, if you want to go generic on the coat, then don't go generic on something else. You know, it's all about contrasts, I think. Mm. Um, and as we're sort of scribbling like this and creating something, I think the very nature of it should, in a sense, be be sort of speculative, one's not sort of being too definitive about it, but you can be increasingly definitive depending on what what you do. So for instance, what I'm going to do is give this bear a, a scarf that mirrors maybe your character's scarf, so it's a sort of visual linking in some way. Oh, so they're both on this together yeah why not doing. why not i think i think you know if you're going to quest with anything a bear is as we've seen in things like um uh, his dark materials and uh you know um any number of wonderful sort of fancy adventures you know bears are great companions to quest with in 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 these in these sort of stories so you know, this is like um the slightly well-built elderly uncle of Rupert Bear. <laughs> if anyone remembers Rupert Bear from long ago. It's going to have a holding something, but I don't know what was unexpected. Um, well, she's on a on a quest of some sort, so uh, you know. Think staff, think uh, sort of interesting screwdriver, think um, matchlock sort of pistol or even a sort of arm her with uh, some, something non-lethal maybe. I, mean, I, I think an interesting staff might, uh, yeah. might do the trick. How many um, character designs do you usually have to kind of go through before you find well, the right that's... thing or do you know... Yeah, I mean, straight away. That, well, that's slightly different. I think doing something like this is, in a way, you start with your premise and you embellish it, and as you embellish it, you start to think up, you mm. know, a story of of some sort. You know, what what this might, what these characters might do, and where they might go. What what's the sort of, you know, um, backstory that that you're going to use with them? And um, so, in a way, you 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 tell the story as as the characters mm. emerge. Um, already, I think the dynamic between these two characters is an, is an interesting one. Um, you know, they they are a team, I think, rather than in opposition to each other. Oh yeah. Um, and you know, so so we we could sort of tell that tell that story. Um, for some reason, I'm just wanting her to have glasses. I don't know why. Do you think? Oh, no. What kind of glasses? Just sort of, you know, um, just just give her a, you know, <laughs> just gives her a sort of like a certain authority in a way. I mean, I quite like that. <laughs> sort of, so it makes her thoughtful. You know, there's often that sort of sense of, you know, the intellectual's glasses. I don't know, maybe I'm being yeah. too cliche. <laughs> and, you know, expressive hair. Yeah, expressive hair yeah. is good. You know, it's going to be bigger. Uh, because in, in depending on sort of, you know, where she finds herself and what, what happens, you know, that hair is going to sort of, you know, be an enjoyable thing to draw, mm. as is your free-flowing scarf, which I think is, is, is mm. good. Um, uh, you can imagine, I mean, what's this staff used for? You could sort of almost give it a, you know, uh, maybe that's that's too obvious, but, but a sort of, you know, semi-precious inset of... That, that could be useful in some way, you know, that could generate something that, that could be useful, at, you know, 
at some point giving her maybe a slightly sort of sorceress or witchy sort of quality yeah. but again what's happening here is um you know from a standing start uh there is the possibility of of some sort of storyline mm. and the storyline could be very simple it could simply be the names you give the characters and then that becomes an illustration so mm. it becomes almost like a you know designing a magic card or something you know here is so and so and here is so and so um, and you need not develop the, the characters beyond you know this this sort of visual but equally you might say right now this is the starting point of a story and I'm going to start to tell that story and the story is of these two companions um, and they are dressed for travel um, and so you know what is the quest they're they're engaged in where are they going do they uh, do they travel on foot do you want to give them a vehicle of some sort or uh, a means of transportation um, so do you think st the story like story building always starts with characters yes designing I do. the characters I do. that's um, the main thing to to, to do first for, for me mm. that that's that's how i work yeah. and that doesn't mean i have to be definitive i yeah. mean if um if the story sort of becomes something very different and you know suddenly sort of turns into some sci-fi adventure rather than a, a sort of you know um uh, fairy tale type thing then of course the characters can change and i can yeah. go in a different direction but but um, I think a lot of it is about sort of dynamics and about sort of making a connection between, you know, two characters. Mm -hmm. uh, another fun part of designing characters is giving them names. So, so you know, what, what is your character's name? Uh, I don't know, I'm rubbish at names. Okay, right. <laughs> well, I'm going to just jump in there. I knew you were going to do Persephone or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm doing this sort of, you know, two two bits. I've put a doctor in, so doctor already, you know, we're, we're going for that. Yeah, so, so Jones is the normal, you know, like, sort of holding position thing, and then you give her a sort of flamboyant <laughs> person. So, you know, gives you a little expectation. Um, and so then there's this character. And I'm going to think. I'm... If she's a doctor. What does that make him? Um, I think that makes him. Robert. <laughs> um, and um, I'm calling him Robert after. I don't know. I, I like the idea of sort of Mr. Rupert. He's Robert the Mayor. Nice. <laughs> um, I think um, mm -hmm. I'm just going to add Robert the Butler Bear. He's a butler? He's a butler. Okay. I don't think the, Dr. Persephone Jones would have a butler bear. Well, there's a story behind that, obviously. <laughs> you know, um, here we're in the mountain uh, cabin and laboratory in this craggy wilderness that she has set up um, with an attendant cave that Robert the Butler, you know, sort of hails from. So this is a mountain top. hideout, headquarters, whatever yep. it might be, um, and she is conducting whatever her deep research might be with the aid of, of Robert, who is, you know, generally a factotum who who sorts things out, helps her out a little bit like sort of Batman's, you know, okay. butler. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, I see. So that's their dynamic. And so now, you know, what they are doing here will start to sort of come into some sort of relief. So you've, you've begun with the, with the characters and now you're giving them a, a sort of maybe a location. And the next step in, 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 in a sense of setting the characters on a journey is to decide what it is they might be encountering or want to do something about. And you've got a number of decisions you can make. It can be, are they opposed by 
some other characters. There will be other characters within the story arc, but um, or is there a sort of trigger for for their line of inquiry? Does something go missing? Does something change? Is there a climatic change to something? You know, um, in this, if her research is into a certain thing, what is it that she's researching? So that begins the story in in, in some way. Um, but you begin by designing your characters and then you start to put a story together. Mm. So immediately, you, often beginnings are easy, middles are hard, and endings are very tricky. <laughs> um, so this is our easy beginning, but already we've got things we can talk about. I want to know what's in that pocket. <laughs> um, I want to know the properties of that. Yeah. I want to know the uh, relevance of the feather. I'm thinking some creation myth, maybe it's from an eagle that befriended her as a child that will yeah, then return yeah. at some point to help her out in some way. She <laughs> has the feather to command eagles. Um, you know, Robert has got everything you might need. He's capable, he's a great backwoods bear, um, you know, a, a great companion to go on, um, except if it gets climatically very cold and he goes into hibernation and then she's got another problem. So again, we've set up maybe a, a series of possibilities mm. um, that these two characters can go on. And I think, uh, you know, this is maybe a template, I think, for thinking about your characters and designing your characters as a story starter. Mm.